Hey YouTube, Mobile Gamers Unite. How's everything going? I hope well. Well, this is the video about tanks that I promised everybody. So, there's a lot of ground to cover because there's a lot of misinformation out there on YouTube right now. So I wanna get a few things straight and um, have a seat. I could talk about this for an hour, but I'm gonna try to make it a lot quicker than that. But first of all, if we're gonna talk about tanks, let's talk about the main tank himself, Mr. Ledin, and why Ledin is so good. Because I think that in order for you to understand how tanks really work in this game, you need to look at the best tank in the game and really see what makes him so great and why he's the standard, okay? So this is Ledin. Mine's only at 3,000 power level. Um, if you notice his gear, he's wearing a robe, Death's robe, okay? This is what makes part of the reason why Ledin is so good. He can be a healer class. He's a priest that gets to tank. Now, priests aren't weak to anything, which means that you don't have to worry about anybody getting attack priority over Ledin, which is you know, really, really useful as a tank. On top of that, Ledin is strong against undead units. So that's going to come in handy, especially for like mid-game content. Ledin just destroys everything. Um, so, let's see. I got a few notes here because it's a lot. It's a lot to go over. Um, robes are really important to Ledin because a lot of these robes in this game are made for a magic user to be able to get hit and somehow survive and somehow get out of battle. You can apply that to a tank. That's amazing. Look at what uh, Death's Robe does. Chance of being critically hit reduced by 30% when attacked. That's amazing for a tank. That's going to minimize on a lot of damage that a lot of crit units are going to throw your way. And then at 20% chance to increase enemies damage taken by 20% and that lasts two turns. So that means if somebody triggers that, then your tank has officially weakened them. Okay, in your counter attack when your other units are attacking this target, he's gonna take 20% more damage now. And this can be spammed when Ledin is blocking for you. So let's look at his soldiers real quick. Ledin can have Amazon Champions, which are, they're an amazing spear troop, and they're great for killing cavalry. So, those are very important. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Um, he has the Mermaid Men, so he can do some water battle stuff. Uh, Tide Masters, they're very important because water can be very situational, and if you take advantage of it, you can come out on top. And then finally, uh, Lance Felix. These guys are some of the best tank troops in the game because they just reduce the damage that they're taking when they get hit. So that just makes them one of the best tank units in the game. So another thing we need to mention is every hero shares a certain percentage of his stats with his troops. So a character like Ledin, who is an amazing tank, he shares like 30 to 40 percent of his defense with his troops. That is a big deal because when we start talking about some of these tanks, um, for instance, Mr. Altamuller, a lot of people think that he can be a tank for um, for a Dark Incarnation fusion team or that he can be a tank for the Empire team. Alta Muller can only be a mid-game tank. He cannot cover end-game material. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he does not increase his unit's defense by a high percent. He's only increasing their defense by 10% of his stat. Real tanks, it's up in the 35s. 40%. What Altamuller does, though, is he increases his troops' attack by 40% of his stat. So, Altamuller 
you know, you can say he's tanky and he can kind of off tank and stuff like that, but really he's a sustained assault shock trooper. And he's made to go in there, take a couple hits and survive and really disrupt the enemy's uh, attack formation. It's really just gunk up the works. He's great for getting your assault started um, because he can take a few hits and survive. That's really the extent of Alta Mueller's tanking ability. So that means for the Empire team and for Dark Reincarnation team, the only real choice you have for a real tank, somebody that actually adds 30 to 40% to his troops defense is Bernhard. Okay? And there's there's been some miscommunication about that because I've seen a few YouTube videos that think Oh, um, I can't wait to have Altamuller as my tank. He's going to be flying around the battlefield, and he's going to be tanking over here and tanking over there. It's not going to work like that, guys. If you look at Altamuller, if you look at his troop choices, because these things are actually going to be what's doing a lot of the tanking, okay? Um, the Dark Centurion are great. They have good defense and stuff like that, but they only move three blocks so so much for you know running flying across the battlefield and tanking everywhere unless you want to bring like griffin knights with you they have 185 defense they're not really going to tank much gargoyles your defense is around 200 and it's not going to get that much help from alta Mueller's stats which is why he is only a mid game tank and honestly guys if you're trying to run Alta Mueller as a tank it's a waste of him as a character really because he can be doing so much damage out there so much sustained attack okay so um we're also going to talk about Vargas and Frivia now these are tanks that are, are of the Lancer class and that's important because most tanks are lancers. Why are most tanks lancers? Well, I'll give you a pretty good idea. First of all, lancers specialize in taking on cavalry. Cavalry are the hardest hitting troops in the game, Leon included. So as a result, um, you know, lancers are anti-cavalry. So to make up for the huge amounts of damage that they have to take, Lancer units are given a bunch of damage reduction. Well, if we go into training over here and we start looking at Lancers, they have a lot of skills here, especially in the higher levels, that, uh, let's see, when a Lancer's hit points below 50%, damage taken is reduced. And then what's this? Lancer damage dealt increases when being attacked. So these guys are really just all made to reduce damage as much as possible and to really shine when they're getting hit. Okay? So that's why most of the tank characters in this game, they're going to be green guys. They're going to have Lancers. Okay? This is what makes Bernhard and Ledin so important. Okay? Ledin, as we already went over, he gets to be a, a cleric. So he's a healer class, but he gets to, you know, take defensive troops. He gets to give them a good defensive bonus off of his own stats. And he doesn't have a weakness to anything. Tanks like Vargas and Freya, they're stuck in the Lancer class, which means that as soon as an infantry unit comes, he's going to shred them. He's going to do double damage to them. It's not going to be pretty. So those are the flaws with those tanks. But if you can, you know, strategize and if you can keep infantrymen away from your Lancer tanks, they do a very good job and they absolutely destroy infantry. OK, but this is what makes Bernhard. Um, it makes him special, right along with Ledin. Now, Bernhard cannot become a, um, a cleric class. He can't be a healer tank. Only Ledin can do that. But what Bernhard can do is he is technically considered an infantry unit. 
He's an infantry unit tank. Now, he's not that special because Leaden can technically do the same thing. If you go through his hero class, he becomes an infantry unit and he can still use some of his, um, all of his tanking abilities while he's an infantry unit. So, can he outdo Bernhard? The answer to that is no, because, because Bernhard has his fusion power, he can make himself do more damage to units that he has attack priority over. Like Lancer units, Bernhard destroys Lancer units because he's an infantry unit himself and they're polar opposites. So that makes Bernhard very, very interesting. On top of that, this is what people really overlook about Bernhard. Um, let's look at a tank like, uh, let's see, even Leiden. Leiden's a great example because he's the best tank. Let's look at his soldiers real quick. We got spearmen, we got some exorcists, of course. And then we have infantry. Um, and he has a weak cavalry unit that he can take. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of that's because if they gave him a strong cavalry unit, he would just be OP. Regardless, um, Bernhard can do the same thing, except he can take a better uh, cavalry unit with him. And what he can do is he can use his fusion power to get that cavalry to do 20% more damage because they're going to have uh, attack class priority over infantry units. So if Bernhard's fighting another infantry tank like him, Leden, he can bring... Um, Let's see, what, what exactly, what are his troops? I was just looking at this. He can bring... First of all, these red guys, the Dark Guard, they're one of the best things for Bernhard, and we'll cover that. But he can bring Guardian Cavalry. When attacking damage taken is reduced by 24%, that's amazing. They have a high hit points. They have a good attack. Okay. So he can always make sure that he has some sort of attack priority. Even if he himself as the hero isn't getting that 20% damage from attack priority, he can make sure that his troops get 20% uh, more damage attack priority. And let me tell you something. If you get hit with his Guardian Cavalry unit at full strength and they have attack priority over you, well, they're going to do double damage to you and then they're going to do 20% more damage that's 20% on a huge pool already. And then throw in Bernhard's damage, whatever, you know, whatever he's going to throw in there. So <clears throat> it's a lot of damage that he can do because of his fusion power. Okay. And while we're at it, let's talk about the Dark Guard. Typically, Bernhard is going to run the Dark Guard. And in my opinion, the Dark Guard is the strongest infantry unit there is. When attacking, after battle, it deals damage equal to 10% max hit points to the enemy. That's a nice barb. It hits for like 1,500. But then here's the best part. After that, restore 20% of soldiers' hit points. That's amazing. These guys are like, you know, two quarters vampire bats and a quarter lance felix. Um, they are awesome. And if you level them up, with Bernhard, and if you take advantage of his fusion power, Bernhard can destroy other tanks. Because remember, he's the polar opposite of most tanks, like Freya, like Vargas. You know, we're talking some of the best tanks in the game here. He is their headhunter. About the only person he can't really do this to is Leden. If Leden and Bernhard meet on the battlefield, they're pretty even when it comes to class priority because they're either both going to be heroes or um, infantry class or Bernhard's going to be infantry and Leden is going to be a paladin so he's going to be a healer class. But really, just about any other tank Bernhard meets on the battlefield and this is what I like about Bernhard. He's jealous. He's jealous as a character and he's jealous as, you know, his mechanic in the game is a sign of a lot of jealousy. Bernhard's the emperor. They make that very clear. Um, he doesn't like having to be rivaled for power. 
you know, in the story, he even uses Basil to try to get a bunch of power and steals it from him because there's no way in hell he's going to let Basil be more powerful than him. He says a few times that, oh, the Alhazard, yeah, it, uh, it poisons people's minds and stuff, but those people aren't as strong as me. You know, well, whatever the Alhazard can do, it can't do it to me because I'm just that powerful. So Bernhard is very jealous when he sees another tank on the battlefield. He goes and rips his throat out. And most of the time he can do that very easily because of his fusion power and the fact that he's probably going to have attack priority over any Lancer unit, which is really cool. And this is what I like about Bernhard is that you get to play a tank who's anti-tank. Also, when you play Bernhard, it's different. Because most tanks are constantly just throwing abilities that let them tank and block and get in front of people. When Bernhard tanks, he's actually attacking people. It should just be part of the strategy. You should move your team up and whoever your weakest link is, be it your healer or Leon, somebody that needs tanking, leave room for Bernhard to stand next to him. Bernhard should be the last unit moved up after everybody's already done their damage. And Bernhard can either cripple a unit he gets next to, or he can finish somebody off. He can heal off of that. And the next turn, when the enemy retaliates, Bernhard is standing next to your healer or to your Leon, and he's ready to soak up all the damage. So, also, I must say that Bernhard can keep a very high attack up while still being a tank. You can tank with him and then you can go after people and attack them one-on-one -on -one, um, in combat and it's effective. He's going to do a lot of damage. The Dark Guard's going to do a lot of damage. But one thing that we do need to point out with Bernhard is if you want to take advantage of him as a very powerful tank, you need to level up the Dark Guard and when you go into your skills, there's a very important skill that increases the tank ability of your infantry troops. We'll go into training and look at that right now. And it's right here. What is this? Emergency treatment. Damage taken by infantry is reduced by 11% when hit points is 80% or higher. It's pretty easy to keep your hit points at 80% or higher when you heal 10-20% of your max HP every turn like the Dark Guard does. So you want to level this up. You want to level your Dark Guard up as high as possible. Obviously, I still have a ways to go here. Mine's only level 5. So, But this skill alone is going to make his units a lot more tanky because as long as they're at 100 percent health they're going to get some good damage reduction to the first couple hits they take and as soon as they get back up to 80 percent health which is not that hard for them um that damage reduction is going to go and it's going to be there so another reason why this works so well with bernhard is because if you look at bernhard's skills he has something that pretty much turns him into a miniature Alwyn. I think it only takes one of his skill slots. Let's see. Let's go into... Oh, right here, skills. Right, what is this called? Sunshade. He has Sunshade. So when entering battle with the melee attack or after battle, so whether he's attacking or he's being attacked, he's got a 30% chance to uh, restore 30% hit points. And it's 30% of damage dealt in battle. And Bernhard deals a lot of damage, so you're going to be healing a lot off of that. And that only takes one of his skill points, which leaves you enough room to maybe run a fusion power, um, and his actual tank ability, which is what we're going to talk about. Now, I am a huge fan of running fusion powers on tanks because there's a lot of times where tanks are on their way into the battlefield. They're not always the first ones to get there. They can throw fusion powers. I don't want my attacking units to have to throw fusion powers because, well, they need to be attacking instead of throwing buffs. 
All right. So this is uh, Bernard's skill tree. And obviously to get the uh, his fusion buff, you're going to want to go down the middle to Emperor. Okay. But if you want him to be a good tank, you need to spend one rune and get General. This takes up two uh, of your skill points. It's called Iron Fist. It's instantly going to turn you into a tank because passive, you take physical attacks instead of nearby friend units. When you activate this, your guard range increases by two, sounds very familiar, and your attack increases by 20%. That's really nice for him. Um, and it grants the buff parry, which is why this thing takes two um, points instead of one. Um, takes physical attacks instead of adjacent friendly unit last two turns. Now his other parry ability, just parry by itself, it also adds 7% of attack to defense, which means that this other ability right here, Iron Fist, it should do the same thing because it does have parry built into it. I just don't think that they wrote it out. So really, if you want him to tank for you early on, you can spend one runestone, you can pick up Iron Fist, and then just work on him offensively as you go down to Emperor and, you know, get that. But if you want him to tank end game content, not only do you have to work on the troops that I showed you and that, that passive skill that lets them reduce some of the damage they're taking, because we're talking end game content now. This guy is going to take a level 60 dragon attack. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking very extreme circumstances. We're not talking just taking a few attacks from some monsters here and there. If you want him to be able to stand in front of a dragon and take those attacks, you are going to want to put Iron Fist on him. And then from here, it's absolutely crucial that you put Heavy Shield on him. Between those two, that's going to take four of your skill points. Heavy Shield, when attacked with a melee attack, 25% chance to decrease damage taken by 50%. That's huge. That right there is what's going to help you survive a dragon attack. You're talking about a dragon that they have 15, 1700 attacks sometimes. It's ridiculous, especially at level 60. And if your tank can just stay alive for two or three turns sometimes... That is the difference between winning the battle and losing. So for him to have just a quarter chance to cut the damage in half, and that's after the damage has been processed through his high defense and his troops and all that, this is really going to help him stay alive. But unfortunately, you have to put three rune stones in him to fully unlock him as a tank. Now... Because I run these teams, I run these fusion powers, yes, I will be putting the runes to unlock general, and then I will be going through and getting gladiator, and what is this one, king, emperor, well, whatever this last one is. I also need to talk about gladiator. He gets shield bash, which is super nifty. It's just like Basel's ability to put somebody to sleep. That, of course, takes two of his skill points, so you're primarily going to be using that in PvP, but I do see that being very, very useful in PvP. So this guy's got a lot of utility, and he's got a lot of fun stuff to use. That being said, he is my favorite tank. Now, the big question, who's a better tank? Who's the best tank? Is it Leden? Is it... It's, it's obviously not Ultimer because we talked about that. He's only a mid-content tank. So, who's the better tank between Ledin and Bernhard? Well, Ledin is a better tank. Okay, but we need to stop and ask ourselves why. Well, Ledin's a better tank because he has to be. Because of the fusion group that he tanks for. Ledin is running around with a bunch of very squishy characters that quite literally need Ledin to be their Superman. You're talking characters like Chris, I mean just really squishy cannons that if Ledin's not there, that team would get picked apart so quick. Then let's look at uh, Bernhard. Who's Bernhard tanking for? Well, Bernhard's going to be tanking for an Empire team or a Dark Reincarnation team. 
Really think about that for a second because who is there to tank for in those teams? You got Altimer, Altim Mueller, who is already Mr. Half Tank himself and is already flying around with 350 plus defense and a high magic defense. Okay. Let's see who else do we got. Oh, well, we got Basel. Let's see, Basel can can use some tanking, except Basel can bring Stone Colossuses with him. That's a, they're a 10,000 hit point shield, and after 70% health, they reduce the damage that they're taking by like 30%. So, doesn't look like Basel really needs that much tank ability. Let's talk about, oh, Lana. He can tank for Lana. Oh, wait, that's right. Lana still has Lava Golems. They're not as tanky as... Um, Basel's golems are, but they're still very tanky, and they still have close to 10,000 hit points. So then, well, what do we need Bernhard for then? Who is he even actually going to tank for? At least Ledin, he has to be there for that job, but it doesn't really seem like uh, Bernhard even really has anybody to tank for. Now, guys, really stop and think about this. Remember, we live in a healer's meta. Your healer does not have to fit your fusion power because healers are skill-based, not stat-based. If you're running a healer that doesn't get the advantage of the fusion power that you're using, it's not even going to really matter. I mean, what? She's going to be missing out on 20% to her intellect, and she's going to heal for a couple hundred hit points less than she possibly could have. So, that being said, even if you are running an Empire team, even if you are running Dark Reincarnation, you're probably going to have a God-tier healer there. So, Liana's going to be there, or Tiaris is going to be there. That is who this guy is going to be standing next to. Really. So, keep that in mind, that's the whole point of him. So is Ledin a better tank? Yes, but Ledin has to tank for his whole faction. This guy just has to tank for the healer that's with him. On top of that, the gameplay is completely different. Ledin is going to spend every turn throwing up his abilities to tank. Ledin can get his attack up to like 900. But really, it's it's only when his tank ability is activated. Uh, let's look at him real quick again. Because I, I wanted to go over his skill tree and actually the, the skill tree that I picked for Leaden. Because a lot of people don't know about this. I actually went and picked up General so he can have Lance Felix. And so that he can have Divine Guard. Divine Guard's the big one for him, okay? Because it increases, it makes his attack scale off of his defense and magic defense so that he can retaliate really, really hard, okay? But it only lasts two turns, so you're going to constantly keep reapplying this, all right? Um, what I do is I run this with the Lance... Felix ability. They both last for two turns, so his guard is never going to go down to um, to one block instead of two. And this Lance Felix stacks with the Divine Guard because it increases his defense by 20 more percent. So when you have both of these going at the same time, your attack even increases a little bit because your attack becomes scaling off of your defense and Lance Felix gives you 20% more defense. They stack together very well. They take up four of his slots. So for the fifth one, I'm obviously running block. Has a 30% chance to decrease unit's physical damage taken by 30%. Think about this, guys. Um, Bernhard has a 25% chance to decrease physical damage taken by 50%, not 30. So, you know, you can see where they're comparable. And really, that's what it takes to be able to tank endgame things. Because you're going to be jumping in front of dragons that are attacking you and stuff like that. So, um... Ask yourself 
why does this tank have to be so good? It's because of the people he has to tank for. Okay, Ledin has his hands full tanking for everybody that's in his faction. Let's see, who do we got here? Um, we got Cher, the glass cannon of the game. We have uh, Liana, who is a healer who's going to take a lot of damage. Nar absolutely needs a tank. Chris absolutely needs a tank. Um, Hein absolutely needs a tank. That's why Ledin's the best tank in the game. Plus all the other reasons we covered, and it's because he has to be, okay? So then when you look at a unit like Bernard, he doesn't have to be as good of a tank because his fusion team doesn't need as good of a tank, which means he can be more offensive at the same time. When, when you're playing Bernhard as a tank, he's actually going to be moving up and attacking people. You know, he's going to use his ability to increase his block range to two blocks. But then after that, he's going to be going after units and he's going to be attacking them. He's going to be using that dark guard to do extra fixed damage to them and to heal himself. And for his last skill point, you can put that um, ability on that has a 30% chance to heal him 30% of his damage. That really keeps him going. Even when there's not a healer there, he can just do a shit ton of damage and he can keep himself healed. So, um, this is pretty much, like, in my mind, how tanks work in this game. Um, if there's something that I missed, or I didn't cover, or if there's something you would like for me to elaborate on, um, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll be more than happy to go into this like I tried to make this the easy version because I could talk about this for an hour you know if we wanted to we could really get into all the different percentages that these heroes add to their troops and why the tanks add 30 to 40 percent defense you know and all that and we could go through all the the different numbers but this is really it in a nutshell so as far as and this is what I want everyone to take away from this as far as empire is concerned and dark reincarnation the only real tank is bernard okay now alta Mueller, you can take up one of his skill points just to give him parry and that's situational and it can be useful on some of these maps where your forces are spread in half maybe you got on the right side, you got your healer and you got Alta Mueller, and they're standing next to three enemies, and you know your healer is going to get attacked. Well, before that fight starts, you can just put parry on Alta Mueller, and you would much rather have him take those attacks than your healer. So it's useful for him, but Alta Mueller is going to be wasted if you're trying to use him as, a, as an actual tank with endgame content. He's going to die too quick, and when he does, he's going to take away so much DPS from your team that you're going to have a hard time. So guys, if any of you out there are trying to build Alta Mueller as some kind of crazy flying tank, really think about what you're doing and don't waste your resources. If you don't have Bernhard for now, I understand if you're using him, and I hope he serves you well, but if you got Bernhard, there's no reason why <laughs> you shouldn't be building him up to be the future tank that you need. If you're running Dark Reincarnation, and if you're running Empire especially. Another reason why Bernhard is so good for the Dark Reincarnation team is because for Basel's uh, fusion power to shine, everybody has to be debuffed. Well, look right here. Right in Bernhard's talent, when entering battle, damage increased by 10%, great. All enemies within two blocks have attack and defense decreased by 5%. That's a debuff that is automatically going to hit everybody, which means that you only need Lana to throw up one black hole to give everybody else two more debuffs, and then bam, everybody's doing 15% more damage against all of the enemies that are debuffed. So, you know, a lot of people overlook that this guy has a debuff built right into his talent, you know, so that's really cool. Now, my Bernhard is only a three star. He's at 3,700 power, and this is all offensive. 
I cannot wait to get some of his tanking abilities put a couple rune stones in it I've already called it I'm going to completely rune stone this guy out and he's really going to be the core to my um, empire team and he's going to be a big part of my dark reincarnation team which I usually run him more offensively but when I get him ruined out I will definitely make a video of some gameplay. He's already tearing stuff up for me. It's so fun to play with him. Well, this, the mechanics this guy can do are great. He can prevent people from healing. He can debuff people. Um, he can attack people diagonally, and that's a move that he gets every two turns, so it's somewhat spammable. And he also has Rupture. So after he attacks you, you take fixed damage. And when you're running that dark guard of his with his rupture ability, you, after you attack, you do a ton of damage. And you're probably going to have attack priority, so it's going to be doubled and you're going to get 20% more damage. Then your little red guys are going to hit for a couple thousand fixed damage. Then your rupture is going to hit for a couple thousand fixed damage. That's a lot of damage altogether. So, um... Bernhard is definitely one of my favorite units in the game. That's why I got the skin form, guys, because I'm going to be running him. He's here to stay. 3747 is not even uh, a great total power for him. The equipment I have on this guy is level 20. Uh, let's see, I got some mirror armor at level 30. But other than that, if I deck out his equipment and just level it up, there's no reason why this Bernhard can't be at 5,000 power level. So I'll get some videos out later, but I hope this helped clear up any misinformation that's going around on YouTube right now about tanks and, you know, Alta Mueller being this flying tank and, um, you know, like I said, if I'm wrong anything about anything, if, if you got any questions, let me know. My comments over. Uh, they're open. So, uh, Mobile Gamers Unite, Vlad out. You guys have a good day for the rest of your day, every day. Thank you.